Head Stitchers, Olivia B here. Um, thank you for tuning in to my latest video. Sounds weird. I never know how to open these things. Um, it has been a little over three months since my last video. Um, didn't mean for it to be that long, but um, it is what it is. Um, so I am back though. I have been anxious to make a video. I have stuff piling up. Every day I think I'm going to do it and then that day just like the time disappears. Um, so I'm here. I'm making my video. Um, so let's see. What's been happening? Um, oh, real life. <laughs> my work is not, hasn't been cheerful lately. There's a, just lots of stuff, layoff stuff like that going on. I'm okay. Um, I'm still there. That's nice. But you know, it's, it is what it is. Um, just a time of change let's say that we'll go you know won't bore you with the details um but uh normal life you know i got my old dog dusty if you're not new here if you are new here i have a, my dog dusty's a he's a senior and um he takes a good amount of he's a good amount of care these days but he's doing well he's uh he's got energy he just doesn't have a lot of strength he's got arthritis but i take a lot of little walks every day and that kind of thing um but other than that, I have, um, I've been working, I've opened, I've talked about before, I have a little Etsy shop called Hillside Rookery. Um, and I won't really talk about that till the end of the video in case it's not something you're interested in. But um, that has been a lot of fun to focus on, especially when work is not so fun during the day. It's nice to have something like that to distract me. So anyway, I um, don't want to take up too much of your time with the chit chat because I have a lot to show you. Um, after three months, I have some good progress on my stitching and I also finally made some good FFO progress, fully finishing um, some of my pieces that have been piling up. I had a quiet time that week between Christmas and New Year's and I decided that what I should do is take a week off of stitching, which I know for us sounds horrible and it's not easy. But my, my evening routine is usually stitching um, at the end of the day, which um, is wonderful. It makes me happy. Um, but I thought, you know, a lot of these FFOs I've been putting off because it would take away from my stitching time. So if I just told myself no stitching for this week, um, I think I could get some good good work done on those. And I did. I um, finished a bunch of pin cushions and I framed a few things. Um, so I'm just going to start pulling those out and showing you. Um, hopefully I remember... I might forget a couple of names of the stuff. I didn't pull all the charts out because I've shown the finishes with the charts um, before. But, um, well, the first thing that I started and finished um, and hadn't showed you was an ornament that I made for my friend Michelle Hudson of Sacramento, California. Um, we did a little exchange, four of us, um, Michelle, Maddie, my sister Elena, and I. And um, I made Michelle an ornament. I will insert... Um, a picture or a little video of that here. Um, that is a little excerpt from a pattern called Noel Blanc from Amonami Pierre. It's, this is the pattern. Um, I stitched this little holly thing here. Um, I stitched it over one on 28 count. Um, the outside border in white was over two, but then everything inside was over one. And I think it came out cute. Um, unfortunately, this pattern is out of print, um, but I had a copy that I bought a while back, a few years back. Um, and so yeah, so that was fun, and I think Michelle liked it. And um, I received a gorgeous ornament from Maddie in the exchange. This is um, from a Brenda Gervais pattern. French General in the back, so pretty. She does, she's just really good cable, cabling. Um, and uh, she changed the colors um, of the bird. My favorite, uh, she knew my favorite color of General Arts is Mulberry. And um, she changed the color of the bird. Uh, Peace and Joy, those are like, when it comes to Christmas holiday time decorations, those are kind of my favorite kind of, um, what would you call it, just words. Um, I don't know. This is very my, my holiday aesthetic and it's absolutely beautiful, super thoughtful the way she customized it and I could not be happier. So that will be on my Christmas tree for the rest of my life. I love it. Thank you, Maddie. Um, all right, I'm going to show you some other things that I finished. Um, this is a 
Blackbird Designs pin cushion. I had it, I had had it sitting there, sewn as a pin cushion. Everything I just had to stuff it and put some trim on. Um, this is the Bells from Christmas Day booklet, and I can't remember what the actual pin cushion's called, but yeah, so that came out cute. Um, this one is um, look at that Luminous Fiber Arts. Something with strawberry in the title. Um, it's charted in red, all in red. I changed the birds to black. Um, this one is not fully done, I think, I, because I think I want to put some black trim around it. Um, just to kind of highlight it. Uh, my pink cushions, they're never perfect, but they're done. So, that's really cute. Okay. Um, then in the last video, I had a whip, um, is Stacy Nash, four and 20 blackbirds, it's called. And I FFO'd that per her instructions. The only thing is, or it's a needle roll, I guess you call it. Um, I have, I still have to put a piece of ribbon on it to tie it around. Um, I just need to get a piece of black ribbon. Um, oh, there's all kinds of dog hair in here. Anyway, so this is that. I, um, I had stitched it on a light fabric. And then I just used um, walnut crystals, painted it all over it, and let it dry. Um, so I didn't even really go for splotchy look. I just wanted it darker. Um, and then it's I used some wool. And yeah, this is really her instructions. I just went by those, um, added a little stitching on the sides, and it was a lot of fun. So the idea is that this rolls up into a little thing like this and then you have a black ribbon here and you tie that around and I don't know how I'll really display things like this but I will find a way maybe I hang it up I don't know, I don't know. Um, but that was fun that was cute I had not finished like that before um, this is another Stacy Nash black work pin keep another one I used walnut crystals on and um, aged and stuffed with sawdust and there you go I love that one and then uh, last time I'd shown you there's a no I can't remember the name it's one of the Stacy Nash's booklets that has multiple pincushion patterns I think it has Halloween in the title um, in my last video I showed you that I had finished them and sewn them and I finally stuffed them so there's this one this one also got a lot of walnut crystals. It was a like a light gray fabric, and I realized I wanted I wanted a little browner to go with the other ones. This one, oh, and this one I just did like X's on the side. Um, they all have the same homespun on the back. This one I just did some black jute. Love this one. This is so fun. That one's also got X's on the edges, and then I did the boot. Isn't that cute? It's a little cooking. I don't care though, but it's a witch's boot. So, those are my pin cushions that I finished. That was a lot. Um, and then I did some framing. So, this, um, it's a mix, well, I still have some that are in the works. They're almost done, but I need to like paint the frames. Um, so this one is Black Dog Sampler by Scarlet House. Um, I found this uh, frame at an estate sale, kind of an antique frame, I guess. I don't know how do you tell an antique frame. There's probably an answer to that. But I don't know how to tell an antique frame sometimes. Um, it's just an eight by ten. I doubt this is an antique frame. Um, so yeah, just use this frame. Um, I don't have any glass in it. Um, when I use secondhand frames, I'll usually take the glass out because um, I like to see the stitching. If I buy myself a custom frame, then I'll usually get the anti-glare um, glass. But I do a lot of secondhand frames and those, yeah, no glass. Anyway, um, yeah, so uh, my number one thing was framing. I frame almost everything myself. Number one thing is like, I have learned over the years, it's just, it's not going to be perfect. Like if I can just make peace with that, then the process goes a lot smoother and things actually get framed. Um, there are things on my wall that over time I'm like, ooh, I'd like to change that about that frame job. And I will eventually when I feel like it. Um, the way I frame my stuff, I also feel like I can change it. I don't use anything, I don't use like um, 
if it's if I'm framing something like this, I don't use um, the double sided sticky tape or anything like that um, to adhere it. So it's all laced with like just pearl cotton and pins. Um, and that way I can take it out and fix it if I want. And like this one, for example, I, I'm not noticing until now. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's pretty wrinkled over here that I, I feel like I just kind of had blinders on or something. So if that bugs me over time, then I, I will take this out and fix it up. But good chance it, I'll probably not even see it after a while. So, um, but anyway, that's black dog sampler. Um, these straight border, you know, these straight like stitch borders are not always easy to get straight. So again, I just make peace with imperfection and it gets done. Um, this one is Jenny Beans Halloween from Shakespeare's Peddler. This, oh, you can see I'm wearing white. This is like a plastic that came with the frame and I'm trying to decide if I want that in there or not. I think I'm going to take it out. Um, but, uh, this is a very just cheap, boring frame from Amazon. Um, just a nine by nine. Um, I can't remember. I'd have to look, but I can't remember if the piece is exact square. You can see my finished piece is not an exact square, but I know I made some mistakes in the border, so that might be why. Um, but it's like close enough that I'm good with a square frame. Um, my plan, for, I want to rough this up. This, um, I wanted to try to use like some crackle stuff to make this look different, but I think I need to paint it a light color, then paint it, put the crackle stuff on there, then paint it a dark color. So stay tuned for that. Um, I might, I might record that if I try to mess with that, or at least I'll give you details if it works out. Actually, I'll give you details if it doesn't work out too, so you know. Um, by the way, this is how I like to do the back. I put a mat board in there if it'll fit, and then I do like to put like a butcher paper on the back ideally, but I ran out of the double-sided tape that I used to do that. But um, this is what it looks like before I put that stuff in. So this one's not fully done, but I don't think there's room for mat board. Just a little, little information there. Um, okay, so then this one I bought a custom frame for. Um, and I am going to put the name of the company on the screen. This is the third time I purchased frames from them. It's Modern Wall Framing Company, I believe is the name. They're on Etsy. Um, again, third time I've ordered from them. I've loved every frame I've gotten from them. Their service is great. I always message them with exactly the dimensions I want and um, exactly what I want. So I, I just mentioned I want this, 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 and then they will tell me usually like, enter it as this order here, add this to your cart, etc. They're always um, friendly, communicative, I don't work for them. I just want to let you guys know in case you're looking for some custom framing. It's not like they're super cheap. I mean, I still feel like when I buy a custom frame, I'm still saving up for these. That's why if I can fit it in a standard frame, that's awesome. Um, but uh, this is Jack's Bash by Plum Street Samplers. <laughs> and um, I do get the anti-glare acrylic. You can see some glare there. But when it's on the wall, you almost can't see it at all. And I really like that. Um, and yeah, I love how this came out. I like the warm frame for the warm piece, and I'm excited to put this on my wall. So that was a, a nice frame purchase. And then, my favorite. Quaker Dwelling by Kathy Merrick. Um, she actually helped me uh, pick out this frame. <laughs> So this will be the only one on my wall that I will never second guess the frame choice. Um, this I, frame I got at Michael's. Um, Kathy Merrick said she gets all her frames at Michael's. Um, and uh, she used this frame on her A Winter's Moth. I think maybe I looked at the picture of that one and then looked at the, well, the frame that they had at Michael's and it looks like the same texture, color, and everything. It's kind of like a dark, it's got the dark teal that you have in the piece. Um, the frame may be a little different, but it's the same line as the Winter's Moth one, and I love how it came out. Um, so what I did with this one was, um, I still framed it myself, but I went into Michael's and I uh, brought this piece, and I said I want, um, I gave him usually what my, I usually do, which is basically I want um, a half inch, I want the frame a half inch bigger on each side um, than the piece, um, because the lip is usually a quarter inch, and then I'll leave a quarter inch. And this one actually is really tight, so it's up against the edge, but I love it. Um, and I tell them which glass I want. 
get the anti-glare. Um, and then I had them put spacers in it and um, cut the foam core for me. And then um, I go pick it up and then I frame it myself. Um, because I've had, um, I think it's just luck of the draw, frankly. Um, some people, like I know, um, Emily gets her stuff framed at Michael's and she has someone that she works with there who always does a great job in her work. I've done one time I brought three pieces to Michael's and they didn't come out very, they didn't come out well. So I just, I feel better about doing it myself because I'm also someone who has a hard time. Like if I pick something up and I don't like it, it's really hard for me to go back and have them fix it. I know that about myself. So, um, I prefer to just frame it myself and I'm good with that. So those are my frame pieces that I have to show you this time. I think I'm going to go ahead and show you my sewing FFO here. So it's just mix it in because there's not, I don't have a ton completed um, when it comes to sewing and quilting. I wish I had more. Um, but this is, oh wait, I have to grab the pattern. This was a kit that I picked up secondhand. It's called Be Thankful by Cottage Creek Quilts. And I fully finished it. This is one of those another reason why I needed to like take some time off stitching for the hand stitching parts because it the binding it always takes me a while to get. I have a quilt that I'm binding right now that I cannot wait to be done binding it. I've been work I <laughs> this has like been a few years in the works and I won't let myself show it to you until it's bound. Um, but still, I'm only halfway through because I want to stitch. Anyway, so here we go. Be thankful. Ooh, here we go. Isn't that cute? So I did, of course I didn't get it bound in time for Thanksgiving, but um, I will hang this up next fall. Um, it is hand applique. And then I just did some hand quilting. Real simple. And then it's a little embroidery here. And I think it's so cute. And then I was very proud because I made a sleeve thingy for the back, which I hadn't done before, so that I can put a rod in there and hang it up next year. Yay. Um, I, yeah, I think that's the only thing I completed. I have not done any sewing in like a month and a half on my machine, isn't that sad? No, my mom made me hem a couple dresses for her, but don't tell anyone I did that because I don't need word getting out. <laughs> it's not fun. Um, so yeah, I need to get back to sewing. I wanna make more project bags. I also wanna make quilts. Um, but I'll show you, I'll show you a couple things I worked on after I show you my cross stitch whips. So works in progress. Let me show you what I've been stitching on since I last saw you. All right. I focused almost maybe all of December, or almost all of December. I focused on autumn on lazy bear mountain. I didn't, aside from my ornament, I didn't do any Christmas stitching this year. So I just made autumn last a little longer for myself. Um, Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain by Kathy Barrick. Gorgeous. You know it. You love it. You've seen it before. I finished the top part. Oh my god. I am stitching this on 40 count vintage wood smoke from Lakeside Linens. I um, have done my own conversion to over dyed cottons. Um, I did something very grown up by the way guys. I had one of the pumpkin colors that I'd chosen, um, it just didn't fit right. It was too bright. Um, I showed it to my sister and she's like, I like it. It makes it more lively. I was like, it's, that's not what I'm going for. I'm not going for lively here. <laughs> um, anyway, I normally what I would do is be like, oh, that's the wrong color and not do anything about it because I'm kind of lazy with my stitching. But this piece is special. It's one of my all-time favorite designs. It's humongous, so I needed to unpick about like, I don't know how many pumpkins. I felt like 200 pumpkins. I think it might have been more like a dozen. But anyway, I just switched out for a different orange. You're not gonna really notice here, but um, I'm feeling better about it. Anyway, I finished the black part of the border all the way around, made some more progress on that fence, and then also finished the top part. Can't get another look at it. Um, not the top half, the bottom half's bigger. I've started outlining the big moon, which is solid stitching in there. Um, but yeah, I'm excited, very excited about that. So that's my autumn and lazy mountain. 
Next. I... Okay, Bluebird and a Cherry Tree by Kathy Barrett. Can't. I know. <laughs> I have a style. Um, I love this. I am stitching this big one right now. Um, I started this with my friend Trisha, who you know is Preb49 on Instagram. Preb049, I believe it is, to be specific. Um, I want to do the pink cushion too when I'm done with the big piece. Because I mean, come on. I am stitching this. I went called for on this. This is, um, I'm stitching it in the called for MPI silks and 40 count silver fox from Fiber on a Whim. Only difference being mine's even weave and the model is stitched on linen. So this might be a little lighter. Um, but my LNS had the even weave and it's really nice to stitch on the Verdal 40 count even weave. Um, really soft. So that's where I am. I can't remember where it was last time, but I finished all the leaves in the tree, done some more filling on the tree, and then I've been working on the bottom there. Um, looking forward to adding in the cherries. I, uh, so, Kathy Barrett, she, she did the model, or she didn't stitch it, but her model stitcher stitched it, um, Phyllis Lundy, beautiful work, and, um, then the pink cushion she used deeper, like a different red and a different green, and she liked how that came out. I have chosen to take the, that red and green and use that in my big piece. I think I might have mentioned that before. Um, I am actually gonna I'm just gonna start maybe tomorrow. I'll post it, but I'm gonna sell. I'm gonna have floss. Gosh, the words aren't coming out well. I'll have MPI floss packs available for sale in my shop for this chart and I've done the same thing I've taken the red and gr green from the pink cushion for those kits um, there's only a few stitches in his face <clears throat> with black so I'm not going to include full skeins of black I'll just put in a complimentary like a few strands but enough to stitch both the pink cushion and that if you choose to do that anyway these are the silks they have some of the same colors as Quaker dwelling these teals um, and yeah, blueberry and a cherry tree. That one's really fun. Okay, let's make a mess. Let's put it that way later. Okay, oh. Um, no, which one do I want to show us? That's so fun. Okay, so 2023, I decided to do something that I have never done in my stitching experience before. I joined the year long sow. This is the modern folk embroidery sow for this year. Reaching skyward. I just, I saw this. It's just gorgeous. It is so gorgeous. And I was like, I gotta stitch that. And I've never done a sow. I, I know I can't do a mystery sow. It's just not for me. There's something, I don't know what it is. I just can't do it. <laughs> I just, it just, just makes me sweat. I can't, I need to know what I'm stitching. Um, but this, he shows you ahead of time. And then the chart pack it gives the entire chart ahead of time and then he's broken it up for you in 12 sections um, and then he also gives you different options um, you can you know for some of these pieces there's all kinds of different options you can do um, I am someone who does not do well with too many options so I just kind of ignored it and I just went I'm just going with this because I will overthink it and question myself and I just I know I love this so that's what I'm gonna do um, and then I uh, pondered all the different possibilities for what I want to uh, stitch it in um, and I went not too far from the model kind of similar to that but my fabric is 40 count vintage meadow rue from lakeside linens my flosses are gentle arts storm clouds and tarnished gold and I actually had these in my stash and I was like if I have this much of these two colors it's a good sign that I will love it and I do um, so let me show you where I am. I'm working on February right now. And that's where I'm at. And it's beautiful. And I love it. Um, and I'm learning a lot about my preferences with stitching um, by doing this because this is so different from how I normally stitch. And um, I'm realizing I don't really like stitching these horizontal sections like this. I'm much more of a motif and like stitcher, you know? So like if I was stitching this myself, this wasn't a sow. Probably what I would have done is maybe started with the border, 
um, and at least done like the big rectangle around and then maybe I would have just gone like the different lines of the structure and started to fill things in. That's probably how I would have done it if I was doing it on my own. But the way I'm doing it now, like I said, is just these lines across. Um, and it's, I'm, it's, it's harder for me. It's more challenging. Um, I'm also, I'm finding it's probably going to take, I'm estimating about the first half of every month. Um, and so I, I'm still trying to decide if that's how I'm going to do it. So stay tuned for that. Like, am I really going to be able to stick to the first half of every month on the same piece? If it feels too much like I have to do it, then it'll take some joy out of it. But here's what I know. I absolutely love this design. I love my materials. I want this on my wall. I just don't know if I'll have it on my wall in a year. I'm not guaranteeing that. Um, I, sh um, you know, if you've watched any of my past videos, I stitched Big Red Ship of Life, and that was like a huge project, and that took me about five years on and off, and I really enjoyed the process, and that's kind of the more important, you know, piece for me is enjoying the process. So we'll see how I do with the sal part, but um, I do love the piece. I love the piece. Um, so, um, I stitched that for the first part of January and then I, after that, I just was like, oh, I feel like working on Friends of the Heart and I'm stitching this, um, as a sal with Jen Lee from Quirks and Stitches and Emily C from Eclectic Possessions or a start along. We're just going to call Sal start along because that's just less pressure on everyone. Um, and I have loved this piece for so long and so glad we started it. Um, and I'm stitching this on toasted, 40 count toasted almond from Fabrics by Stephanie in the called for flosses. And after I finished the January portion of the modern folk embroidery style, I picked this up and it was just, it just flowed. It just felt wonderful. And I just kept going until the end of the month. Um, when I picked it up, I just had this area, the, like this pomegranate area done. And then I just wanted, I just felt like stitching all these leaves and vines and I did all of those and yeah, it just really flowed. And so I've been saving the heart for last and I have, I'm working on this house down here and then there's just little, little doodads and fill-ins I have to do up here. Um, and I haven't completely decided if I'm going to do, I'm going to wait until I'm completely done with all of, all of that before doing the border because I'm not. I think it'll probably need the border. That border will probably help it at the end. Um, those single stitch borders are, are not fun to frame. <laughs> so I, if I don't need it, I wouldn't like, I don't want it, but we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, so that one's pretty close. Um, it's always nice to have a piece in the whip pile that is close to a finish and know that if I need a finish, I can just go to that one. That is it. That's all my whips, my friends. Um, those are all my cross stitch whips. I'm going to show you, let's see, like I said, not a ton of sewing progress, but I have a little bit. All right. So I think last time I showed you, um, very slowly working on this quilt. Um, this is by Cheryl Wall and get a picture. Sure, it's called a welcome home sampler quilt. Last time I showed, I finished this first block, which is all of this, and I've started on this block. And so far, I have made the house. Isn't that not cute? So I need to add on all the other other pieces of the block. Oh wait, I. Is that the right one I showed you? Yeah, I think so. And I think there's a star in there that I need to hand up. Okay. Um, yeah, lots of pieces. So that's fun. I like that. And then the other thing I worked on, I guess that's really my only, because the rest was project bag. But um, I picked up, I started this last year. Um, this is from the Home Sweet Home book from Blackbird Designs and it's a haul, it's called the Holiday Table Runner and that's it right there. It's wool applique and I'm stitching mine um, instead of wool I just used flannel. It's more affordable. 
um, but it's a nice quality flannel. It's Primitive Gathering, so it's um, holding up well. And I made some progress on it. And I've been working, oh, my snowman is headless. Um, these pieces right here haven't been sewn on yet, but I did sew these on. They still need, um, I think that mainly what I worked on was this here. This is all sewn down, and then I do need to add the embroidery to the windows. And then these have been applied and need to be sewn down. So kind of like I, I get a little done every year. Um, yeah, that's cute. Uh, you know, Blackboard Designs books, most of them, like, they're out of print. Like, I don't, you know, this one's out of print. But um, it is available. Di this one's available digitally. And it links to templates. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to make that table runner, you could, you could, with the digital version of this book. Um, also, I've spoken before about Scribd, S-C-R-I-B-D dot com. It's, um, a lot of people use it for audiobooks. It's like a subscription service. So you pay monthly, and then you have unlimited access to their audiobooks and ebooks. They don't carry everything. So like Audible has a lot of exclusives, um, but they do carry this book, if I remember correctly. Um, I'll put down... I'll put in a link down below to Scribd. Um, I'll put an affiliate, not an affiliate. I'm not like, I'm not like a, I don't work for them or anything, but it's like, I subscribe to them. So if you use my link to sign up for a free trial, you'll get 60 days free. Um, if you sign up on your own, you'll get 30 days free. If you want to sign up your own and not use my link, please don't worry about it. I'll never know. It doesn't matter to me. If I remember correctly, they have that one and you can access that. So you could even do it in a free trial and then not subscribe long term. Um, they have a ton of books on there. Um, if you're into wool applique and quilting, I highly recommend it. They also have cross stitch in there. Um, they have magazines and stuff like that. So it might be worth checking out. Um, okay. So I think that wraps it up for my works in progress. You know what else should count towards all of that stitching is mending. I mended so many sweaters this year because silverfish have been in my closet eating holes into my nice sweaters. So annoying. <laughs> but I've been mending them. I was reminded because there's a hole in this one now again. I'm telling you. And I can actually see where they've been eating away at my sweater. It's so mean. So anyway, so I think I, I guess I need to put them in like plastic totes or something, my sweaters. Um, I, yeah. I did get a Cedar River linen little block. Um, I know that'll work for moths. I don't know if it'll work for silverfish, but it's slowly driving me insane. Um, but I did mend those holes, but yeah, I've been finding new ones, new holes. That's right. That's going to drive me crazy. Anyway, I, that's hand stitching. <laughs> it's like, talk about like, we'd rather be cross stitching, but, and I'm, I don't have no expertise in mending sweaters. I really just take a thread and needle and try to make it look as invisible as possible but that's it um anyway okay i would like to talk about a few gifts i received because people are very nice and um it was christmas and my friend um maddie i showed you gave you that beautiful ornament and my friend michelle hudson from sacramento california gifted me daniel by kathy merrick to add to my beautiful kathy merrick bird collection thank you michelle and she also gave me this beautiful woolen pink uh pink cushion from um under the woolen willow and a lot of other little doodads because michelle thank you michelle i love that um and then oh my gosh so um we all know jody and her beautiful cedar river linens have debuted and released and we all love them um i had before jody had been had um well, you know, revealed that she was going to be dyeing linen. She had done a video and she was showing their beautiful whip, um, modern folk embroidery, the huge one, I think fancy, fancy and ABC is called. It's gorgeous. And I had, she had started it on a beautiful green linen. And I mentioned that I was thinking of stitching it on a beautiful green linen as well. And she reached out to me and said, FYI, I'm about to announce that I'm going to be dyeing linen, um, but I would love to send you a piece 
you know, I'm just trying to get in Stitcher's hands. You don't have to talk about it, etc. But, um, but I am talking about it because it was beautiful and I want to show you. Anyway, in the mail, I received just overly generous. Thank you so much, Jody. This fat quarter of Tefra. Um, I don't know how good it's going to come across because it's a pretty overcast day. I'm trying with the ring light, but this is a gorgeous neutral. It smells really um, and I didn't know this until she did her video, but, um, right up my alley with all the way she's dying it, the environmentally conscious, the no plastic and everything, um, makes me even happier when I touch this linen. <laughs> and it's, it's beautiful. It genuinely is beautiful. Um, and then this is what she sent me, the green. She sent me a fat half because that's what it takes for that piece. She said, I don't have to stitch that piece on it, but, um, a boreal. 40 count. I hope it comes across. This is so beautiful to me. This is like, this reminds me of like, I like to go hiking in the Oakland Hills and this is just reminds me of that. It's just like muddy and green and beautiful. Um, since I started the Modern Folk Embroidery style, I probably won't be stitching Fancy Navy C anytime soon. Um, but as soon as I saw this, I knew what I wanted to stitch on it that also requires a half yard and this is just perfect and that is let me I pull the chart to show you one second this Renato Perlin um I've wanted to stitch this forever I always thought I would do it in like a, a white on dark blue but when I saw this I knew I wanted to stitch it on this earthy fabric um this is the name of it I think this is forest of think so. Um, it's beautiful. It's large. It, you need a half yard across. And um, this is perfect. And then um, years ago, I wanted to stitch Shades of Gold by um, Northern Expression Needleworks, which is a gorgeous pattern. And I saved up and I purchased the silks for it. And I never stitched it. i it was one of those, it was one of those lessons where I like, I don't really, I don't kit things up so much anymore because I remember like I kitted it and I just would think about it and think about it and think about it and I never started it. And then after a few years, I was like, eh, I don't really feel like stitching anymore. I don't know why. I just like, I overthought it. So anyway, I still have those silks. They're Gloriana Floramels. Um, it's not really how they look. They're, uh, there's a dark gold and a light gold and I want to, just choose one of them. I'm going to do like a sample on here. Probably the dark gold and stitch it in that. And then I'll, there's little like, like a deer and a squirrel and, um, I'll probably highlight them in the other gold. So, um, so yeah, that's, I would really like to start that this year though. It's a big piece obviously. Um, but the time has come. I don't want to overthink it and not do it. So gorgeous. Thank you so much, Jody. It just, it makes it even you know, more special because it was a gift from you and I truly appreciate it. Um, and then she launched her fabric and I bought a piece of overcast and this, yeah, Ooh, yeah, beautiful. I, I can't show it well here. I'm sorry. Um, absolutely gorgeous. I need to get my hands on that red fabric too. I want to see that in person. Um, so yeah, congratulations to Jody. Um, it holds up to the hype, Jody. This is beautiful. It feels nice, and I can't wait to stitch on it. Okay, um, I think that brings us to potentially lower your volume or raise it, depending on your mood. But it's time for some. Oh. Um. Okay. Uh, Liz Matthews had a sale on her PDFs. When was that December? I don't know, it was a while back. I purchased Butterfly Cloche. I love this pattern. It is so beautiful. And I did not own it previously. And sometimes I think about maybe converting it to just a little darker, make it more antique looking. But then I was also thinking that might be achieved with the fabric. Like maybe a darker, warmer fabric. I don't know. Um, but yes, I absolutely love her cloches. And that's gorgeous. Okay. And then, geez, I've really only purchased three charts since I last saw you. 
These two were Etsy, no eBay purchases. Sparrow Creek. This is a carriage house sampling chart. And it came with the MPI silks. And I got it and I liked it so much. I'm carrying the chart in my shop and I think I'm going to carry the silk pack too. Um, and I really want to stitch that. That's, that's the thing, it's like I just want to, just want to stitch them all. And then um, one of my favorite designers, Exemplars from the Heart. I did not have this one. House on the Hill Sampler. I think that's adorable. I really want to start that one too. That one's in Weeks, Weeks Dye Works. So pretty. Um, so those are the charts I purchased. And then I set my calendar because So Pretty Pins was having, putting some stuff up for sale. Um, we'll put Instagram handle here for So Pretty Pins. Um, so Pretty Pins is the work of Sue, who is a wonderful, wonderful woman. And um, even if I didn't like Sue, though, I would still love these pins because they're adorable. Homegrown Tomato. She puts a lot of work into these. And So Pretty Pins. And if you go follow So Pretty Pins, you'll get the details on how these are made and... Um, all the work that goes into them. You can purchase them on 1884stitchery.com these days. So, very excited to have those. Now I need the proper pin cushions to put them in. You can see they will go great up here. That, by the way, is stitched for me by Miss Michelle Hudson of Sacramento, California. Um, that's a, need that's a uh, needlework press piece. That, by the way, is Harriet Taylor uh, from the Scarlet House. Um, but yeah, so I need some pin cushions. Maybe those Brenda Gervais ones. I'm trying to think of other ones I have that with tomatoes in them. Um, I think those would go great there. So I'm very excited for that. And yes, that is my haul. All right, I think um, next I will talk to you about my shop and we'll update. So if that doesn't interest you, let us part ways now. And thank you so much for joining me. Okay, so as I previously mentioned, I have a shop on Etsy. Um, it's called Hillside Rookery. I have my Christmas card in here. There you go. That's me. It is so much fun. I am enjoying it so much. I am learning a lot. Um, and right now, what I'm carrying are uh, mostly charts. Um, charts from City Stitcher. Carriage House Samplings, Kathy Barrick, and Hello from Liz Matthews. I know I hit a family tree, but <laughs> these are amazing women, amazing designers. Um, and I really, I can't say enough about the kindness and how helpful they've been. And um, Kathy and Liz and answering my questions, like really just, they didn't have to. They don't need to spend their time doing that. And they do. And they're just as nice as can be. And I'm just like so full of gratitude for that. Um because I, you know, I'm new to this and again, just so much fun. I am, um, I'm so also obviously just so grateful to those of you who have purchased things or have followed me on my, uh, Hillside Rookery Instagram account or favorited my shop. I, it's been, um, a lot of fun sending me packages out. Um, I, uh, kind of, let me just give you my little spiel about my shop. Um, kind of a, what it, the idea of my shop is not um, to carry everything and to be like, every, you know, to compete with all the other online shops that are out there. Um, it's more like a curated collection is my way of looking at it. Um, it's still a small shop and it's patterns that either I have stitched, I am stitching, or that I would really like to stitch. Um, mostly the latter, obviously, <laughs> because I've only lived so many years and done so much stitching. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, that's what's enjoyable to me is just saying like, here's some things that I love. Um, come check them out. Um, it kind of reminds me of like, um, I love, I'm a book, I love bookshops and I'm lucky enough to live in an area that still has independent bookshops. And when you go into an independent bookshop, they don't have the big discounts or the, um, tons of inventory or every new book that's come out. But what they do have is kind of a curated collection of books that, um, you know, the people who work there uh, know about and can talk to you about passionately and have enjoyed themselves and can recommend and that kind of thing. And I guess that's kind of what I'm going for in my little shop. It's um, 
a curated collection and it's also a way for me to um, engage in the community more um, because that's I've found the an area of my life that brings me a lot of joy is the cross stitch community like a lot of us so um, it's just another way of being involved in that so um, again I have charts from those designers right now um, hoping to carry I have a few more favorite designers that I'd like to carry um, and I'm working on that and I uh, love NPI silks I've come to love those over the last few years um, they are local to me they're located in San Francisco and I'm in the East Bay area and um, over the last few years I've stitched a few things with MPI silks and really enjoyed it I really like the quality of them I really like how they stitch um, they are a solid color silk so to me, my in my humble opinion, if you stitch something in DMC and you stitch something in MPI and you hold them up, they look the same to me. Okay, so I'm not trying to tell you that it's going to look better in MPI. I'm a process stitcher. I really love the process of stitching with MPI. Um, I also enjoy this process of stitching with DMC. Um, but these, I'm selling MPI floss packs. I would I've considered several times um, selling DMC floss packs, and feel free to chime in with your opinion, but. Um, a shop, like if I'm purchasing wholesale DMC, I'm paying basically, I think what you would pay retail at like Michael's or Joann's. So I would have to charge basically double what you can get it for there. And I don't know if people would buy them, you know, I mean, cause you can just go, you can go to the big box store. So that's why I don't have DMC, but, um, yeah, I really enjoy MP stitching with MPI. So I've started carrying a few, uh, silk packs and I thought I would just show you an example of what that looks like. So, um, I think the first time I ever went to a cross stitch shop was my local needlework shop, Needle in a Haystack, probably like 2015 maybe. And the first chart I ever bought was In Heaven and Nature Sing by Kathy Barrick. And, um, this is still a super popular chart. It's just a classic. And so I'm selling silk packs for the, for that chart. And so this is what they look like. It's a little burlap bag and it's got a hand stamped label on it um my thinking is that you can when you go to stitch this um you can use this either on your floss tag or your project bag if you like but in the meantime i can just stay here so you know what these are for and then this is a little burlap bag and then inside obviously are all the mpi silks um and then I'm, i've considered offering like um you know, you can pay some extra and I'll put them on floss tags for you if you want. But I haven't gotten that far. Um, yeah, so that's one of the floss packs that I'm offering up now. I have um, a few different ones on there, like a Quaker Dwelling, um, Into the Manor Born, etc. I'm going to be adding um, Bluebird and Cherry Tree soon. And um, a few others, a few smaller ones. Uh, Mind Independent and Free. Few others. I won't go through all of them, but that's what I've been working on, and um, and yeah, just learning the process and um, just trying to be a little bolder. I guess I um, I reached out to one of my like favorite all time favorite designers recently, and I had been holding off um, on reaching out because I think it was just like this kind of like fear of rejection, you know? Like, what if she says no and you're just a little Etsy shop, I'm sorry, or whatever. Um, and I, I was trying to think about, but like, what was my big fear there? I guess, I think in my job and business, I that's fine. Like if someone says that, I'm like, okay. But I think when it's, you know, you're one of your favorite designers, it's like, oh God, what if it's a bad interaction? And then I finally reached out and she was so incredibly friendly. I, it was unbelievable. <laughs> so I'm trying to get better at just, just being a little bolder and having a little more confidence. So, um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to go into that yet because I don't have those charts yet. And then when I do, maybe I can tell you more. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try to come up, you know, come again soon. Um, I did want to mention that a couple of, um, for those of you who've been with me for a long time or just on floss tube for a long time, we've had some Floss tubers come back. Uh, Sherry Burkett came back after like four years, which was so fun to see. And um, Carolyn Mazio, which I think has been like six years, and her last name's not Mazio anymore. Um, so she changed her channel to the Floss Tube Stitcher. Um, 
I came to Floss Tube, I think like seven years ago, and Carolyn was one of the first people that I found. I'd never heard of Heaven and Earth Designs. Like there were, um, you know, designers like Country Cottage Needleworks, little, um, you know, all of those things that it seems like almost everyone knows about now and are common terms you, that we use. Um, Carolyn, for a good group of us, were the one that, was the one that introduced us to those things. So um, she took a long hiatus from Floss Tube and she's back and that's pretty exciting. Um, I also wanted to give a shout out to my LNS, my local needlework shop, um, Needle in a Haystack. They're celebrating their 25th anniversary at the end of March, which is really exciting. Um, and as part of that celebration, they are, they've just released an exclusive heaven, uh, heaven earth design, no, um, hands across the sea sampler. Um, let me actually get the details one second. So Kathy is the owner of Needle in a Haystack, and she did just post a video, so all of that is there. But I wanted to mention Sarah, Rin I don't know if it's Rinder or Rinder, 1841. Um, she's, they're selling it exclusively at that shop. I'm giving a shameless plug because it's my local Needle workshop. Um, so she has a video on her Floss Tube channel, um, Needle in a Haystack. Um, and you can order kits online for that or just the chart. And... Um, uh, Kathy has a tech background, um, so it does not surprise me that she's actually set it up so that if you buy that chart, you can also get a free PDF version if you're someone who um, works off of PDF. So anyway, I wanted to mention that and just give them a shout out. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'm sure I'm going to go to edit this and realize it's super long. Um, so if you stuck with me this long, I really appreciate it. And I really want to make an effort to come back saying it now I want to come back hopefully in a month just so I don't create this huge pile and um and make these super long videos but um thank you all so much I can't tell you how much your kind words mean to me and your support um I really appreciate it take care thanks